Have you ever wondered when a tripod is more than just a tripod? The last three years, I have been on a few different kinds of film sets, from music videos, documentaries, and recently, a feature film. And my favorite part is being a grip. In a quick summary, basically, grips help get the exact kind of setups for specific shots that a cinematographer or a director might want to do. This is one of my favorite parts of filmmaking, and it's something I like to call jerry-rigging. So today, we're going to talk about five different ways that you can get the most out of your tripod, especially when you're a filmmaker on a budget. The dolly zoom. This is one of my favorites. You extend two of the legs to act as that stabilization, and then you have the closed third leg kind of as an extra handle. Then you use the fluid head handle as the tilt. It really makes the shot more unique, more interesting, with such a simple setup. The shoulder rig. This one really comes in handy, especially when I need to get a little bit more stable shot than just holding the camera. I'm still able to have that mobility and action shot, kind of getting the flow of the scene while still having that cinematic handheld look. When it comes to following the character, it really helps keep the camera even more stabilized. Now this is the fun one, the snorri cam effect. This is one of my favorite kinds of filming setups where the camera is more attached to the character. And that usually gives the feeling of disorientation, though, it will look weird, <laughs> trust me. I have two of the legs going through my belt loops on my pants, and then one to kind of keep it upright. <laughs> one that really all tripods can do that I have honestly never thought of doing is you can use it as a monopod. You just extend one of the legs, hence mono one. And with that, you can still get those dolly zooms, but really nice pans as well. It's a little bit more mobile and nimble. Also with this, you're able to still zoom in and out or even pull focus if you need to. Last but not least, using your camera tripod as a slider. I bet you're wondering of the magic of this shot. But this is actually how it looks. It's a lot better than I was expecting. And this is something I actually wanna start using a lot more. So with hardwood floors, I just used a towel to pull across the floor and it worked really well. So for the first part of this video, we talked a lot about varieties of shots when it comes to a lot of camera movement. And though camera movement plays a, a huge role in invoking emotion and driving the narrative, there's something that we can overlook, and that's the static shots. Static shots, I feel, is where real artistry is able to come into play is where you allow the characters, actions and expressions, or the surrounding environment that they're in, the atmosphere, in combination with like really good music selection, heightens that relatability of, oh yeah, that's real life. Sometimes that break in action, that moment of pause, Reflection and recollection is super integral in your storytelling. And speaking of slowing down, a couple of videos ago, my video of the art of slowing down, I had made a cinematic intro sequence in the beginning. I wanted to kind of hook the, the viewer with something interesting, something not vloggy going on, something more, okay, we're jumping into an adventure. Most of the beginning of that whole like sequence was fast shots. And there was a couple static shots in there, but even in those static shots, there was a lot of information happening on the screen. There was some Photoshop AI going on where it was like multiplying and changing out different windows and stuff like that. Just like a lot of fast things going on. But it was up until like the last two shots of the, the intro sequence where I really utilized the, the static shot effect. And I was really trying to emphasize the two things, two vital piece of information to kind of give that payoff of what that little story in the beginning was. And the second to last shot, you see the train going by and me just missing it by like 
30 seconds. So it's that relationship of what's going on with the character. And the very last shot of the intro sequence was more of a close-up where you see me, the character, and just my face expression. And know that there's some voiceover dialogue there. With the scene just by itself, you see my emotion on my face that I just missed the train, all of that payoff of rushing to the train, and I still didn't make it. And I feel like that static shot to end the chaotic sequence that I had for the intro really was impactful, really added that payoff on that buildup. There's a couple of people that come to mind. There's one in the YouTube space and one in like the traditional film space. Wes Anderson in the traditional film space really utilizes static shots. He utilizes the beautiful set design, the colors, the attire of the characters, the characters design themselves, their face expressions, the way they interact with each other and looking directly into the camera. There's like a lot of poetic and creative genius that happens in the screen. Each shot seems like it's meticulously designed. On the YouTube side of things, I really love Van Neistat which is like the antithesis, the opposite of Casey Neistat sometimes. The thing I like about Van Neistat and what he does on his YouTube channel that really differentiates himself from his brother and anyone else is that he really allows a scene to hold. He allows you as the viewer and the audience to really take in what you're looking at and how it correlates to the character, the story, and the emotion. Yeah, you can get a little bit of that from like the very trendy fast cuts and all of that. But I always find it interesting in, in his videos, but in movies in general or shows that I watch, the director or the editor decides to hold the shot. Sometimes I'm like, that's a really long shot. But when it's done right, it's something about it that it just feels right. Like there was so much information that I was subconsciously taking in that really added to the tone of that scene. So the moral of the story is, don't overlook the use of a tripod. You can get all these cool and wacky shots of movement, but also the beauty of just really good composition and a still shot. I like that. I like that. So thank you for reaching the end of this uh, unscheduled and unexpected gear and tutorial video. Move this camera closer. This year I really want to delve into more technical sides of filmmaking, but also equally bringing in the creative side of things. Particularly with this video, I really want to get deeper understandings of the very simple parts of filmmaking, like a tripod. Something that everyone has, but we kind of rarely use sometimes. This wasn't a sponsored video like whatsoever. The company iFootage reached out to me recently. They sent me the Gazelle TC3B to be exact. It's a 280 gram tripod that's specifically designed for the on the go setups. And it's perfect for me because I am constantly on the go and I try to keep things as small as possible to make it easier for travel. And that's where this really comes into clutch. I'm also a big fan of the K3 tripod head. It's one of their newest ones. It is the most fluid tripod head I've ever had. I'm really happy to have it in my arsenal. So thank you iFootage for sending it over. And if you are interested in checking out the tripod for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I don't know how to end these things.